Good morning guys. So today in this video we're going to come I didn't forget from this book and then we're also going to do a genealogy another genealogy video in this video but we'll do um, Bible study first. So for the genealogy video we're going to come from Genesis chapter 5. Last night I um, actually already had wrote it on the board so as I'm going to be reading it to you guys I'll just put it on the board for you that want to write along with this one. Um, and then for Bible study this morning, we're going to be coming from Leviticus 26, 4 through 13. We're going to be revisiting that. Um, if those scriptures are for you um, and you want to like confess them as a prayer and decree over today and everything and just over your life for this month or whatever the Lord say you, um, you know, should do that as well. So that's how this video this morning is going to go. And I'm going to try not to be before y'all long because soon it'll be time for, um, you know, like school and things for justice. So December 8th is today. And it says, if we believe in a sovereign present God, there can be no doubt that we're moving toward greater things. So I pray that this encourages someone today. We believe, we believe in a sovereign present God. There can be no doubt that we're moving toward greater things. So let's have faith and trust in God. He is present. He is with us on all sides through all things. And there's no doubt that we're moving toward greater things. Somebody say that. Say greater things. Amen. So be encouraged by today's um, devotional. And then we're going to read the reward for obedience. But we're going to read verses 4 through 13. So like I said, although it's Bible study, um, if you want to confess this, I know I've been confessing it for years. And when we do prayers, many of you confess it also. But if you want to confess it or prophesy it over your day or just speak it over your life and season, you can. If you just want to just have it read for Bible study, you know, whatever is good for you. So it's talking about the reward for obedience. So verse four says, I will send you rain. This is the Lord speaking. And actually, we can read. I'm going to read one through three, but I'm going to focus in on four through 13. So here is the reward for obedience. Do not make idols or set up an image or a sacred stone for yourselves. And we did a Leviticus series, so you know. And do not place a carved stone in your land to bow down before it. I am the Lord your God. And even going back up to this, um, you know, this this uh, thing for this month is faith, favor, finances. We're talking about land, harvest, increase, business, economy, and different things. And not just physical land, but like I told you guys, we're going to get into this week. Um the land of our hearts what does the ground of our hearts look like don't take it literal uh what type of soil are we in um when it comes to our relationships how is that land our finances business different areas of our life those lands we're going to get more into that um this week so you know this is this is um serious and good too because it's like our land we should only have the lord as our god we should not have no idols in our land, whether that be the land we're in or the land we are about to go into. Because notice, God always takes you to better when he takes you out of what was bitter or what was an Egypt for you. He takes you into better. So like we've been talking about, whether you're getting ready to possess your land or you're possessing your land or he's preparing you for when you do possess your land. This is important to remember. You know, that we shouldn't set up any idols or images, whether that be physically or even idols or images in our hearts. It could be food. It could be um, a person. It could be a job. It could be a position. It could be pride. Any of those things, even if I'm not naming it, the Lord doesn't want us having any idols in our life. He wants to be our Lord and God. He don't want us to have any of those things in, in the land because you see what it does. It defiles the land. And it stunts the way God really wants to bless us in our lives, you know. Okay, to observe my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord, you know. It's important for us to give God what he wants, to spend daily time with him, not just on, um, you know, the Sabbath. Some people, Sabbath is Sunday. Some people, it's um, Saturday. And, you know, as I talked about before, um, you know, what's the point of debating about what day it is? The Bible talks about that. You should not de debate about what day it is. You should not debate about who's eating this and who's eating that. Because when people turn a day 
more into a religion than spending a relationship with God. That's where it gets a problem. So I don't get into those things. Some people, it's not those days for them. It's other days. But as long as you set the time aside that time. And another thing, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just getting up. But another thing is, um, and we're going to keep reading. Another thing also is don't put a day or a tradition then become religious and you lose focus of the relationship with God because that's what happened with the Pharisees and Sadducees people they were so religious that a lot of them weren't able to have for a relationship because they were so into religion right just like the Apostle Paul <clears throat> we did series and teachings on him he was zealous for God and persecuting the Christians but it was to, it was more religious until God, he had that Damascus Road experience and things he went through. And he was able to really preach Christ and really have a relationship with God and really see change. So that's another thing for someone. And don't just give God one day of our, you know, your life. Give him your whole life. Sin, spend every day with him. Make some time for him every day because he made time to wake you up. He made time to provide. He made time to love you. He made time to make sure you're okay. You know, excuse me, God gave us 24 hours in the day. You know, we can give him more than a little amount of time. Okay. So, I mean, I didn't know I was going here this morning, but I guess it's for someone, you know. Okay. Verse three, guys, if you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, and then here's where we get into verse four and 13 and things. And as we said, you know, we're not living under the law. Um, I do believe in the law. I do believe in the commandments, but I do not agree that people should put the law in the commandments above Jesus Christ, because then they're saying that Jesus Christ, um, death, burial, and resurrection in his blood is not enough. Jesus Christ came because we could not keep the law and there are more than just 10 commandments if you really dig into the law there are over 600 something um, laws and commands and if you break one you break them all so we have done lots of videos and teachings about that uh, what the law says what the Old Testament New Testament said how we need both and people that um, unfortunately and I do pray for them but it's like they're so religious that they lose sight of Christ they base their works in the law and in their religion and their own holiness and it makes them self-righteous and they don't even realize that God is not with them in that because they're saying my own righteousness which is as a filthy rag all of us is is greater than the blood and sacrifice of Jesus Christ I feel like that's where it gets dangerous you know so I'm not into that you know but I pray for those that are but going back to three we've done videos and teachings talking about how you know we don't have to sacrifice bloods and uh, blood and goats and different animals because the blood of Jesus is more than enough you know we don't have to go through that every year going to the priest and them doing that and some people still do it they um disqualify Jesus in his blood you know, a lot of us believe in him, but a lot of people disqualify him. And we've got to keep praying for them people, you know. So, um, with three, we did some teachings and videos over the years talking about how, um, you know, you, when God commands you to do something, it could be love your neighbor. It could be don't be prideful. It could be fast. It could be give. It can be spend time with him. It can be write a book or start a business. It could be whatever it is. So you could be clean up. You follow his decrees and obey his commands to you. That yields a blessing. It's not always comfortable, convenient. It could be something like seemingly small to you or big. But um, when you obey, it brings blessing. You know, and the Bible was filled with promises and blessings. But let's get into this. I'm going to read it verse by verse. Verse 4 says, I will send you rain in its season. And the ground will yield its crops and the trees of the field their fruit. So for you especially that have been obedient to God, it's not saying perfect, but you've been obedient. You've still been seeking him. You know, you've been choosing his will over your own. You've been doing your best to seek him. He got rewards for your obedience. Okay, for I will send you rain in its season and the ground will yield its crops. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. And the trees of the field their fruit. Five, your threshing will continue until grape harvest, and the grape harvest will continue until planting, and you will eat all the food you want and live in safety in your land. Six, I will grant peace in the land, 
and you will lie down and no one will make you afraid. You, you notice how we keep talking about harvest and land and it's talking about, about increasing blessings and things. So this ties so perfectly. Okay, I will grant peace in the land and you will lie down and no one will make you afraid. I will remove savage beasts from the land and the sword will not pass through your country. You will pursue your enemies. Oh, so that was six, seven. You will pursue your enemies and they will fall by the sword before you. Eight, five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you will chase 10,000 and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. So you see, you know, when we honor God and we want to be obedient to him and we love on him and like we invite him into our lives, he don't just bless one area aspect of our life. He wants to bless us all around the board on all areas, all areas of our life, right? As we've looked at before multiple times, right? Okay, so in your enemies will fall by the sword before you nine. I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers and I will keep my covenant with you. 10. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it out to make room for the new. 11. I will put my dwelling place or my tabernacle among you and I will not abhor you. 12. That was 11. 12. I will walk among you and be your God and you will be my people. 13. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt so that you would no longer be slaves to the Egyptians. I broke, I mean, 26, 4 through 13. Because when we read Deuteronomy, I usually read 1 through 14. So I'll be having to remember. Okay, 13. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. Yeah. So that you would no longer be slaves to the, to the Egyptians. I broke the bars of your yoke and enabled you to walk with heads held high. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's um now get into our genealogy video. And I kind of wanted to do blue, guys, but the blue marker wasn't working. So, this genealogy video, the other one we did was in Matthew. This one we're going to be talking about from Adam to Noah. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera, um, and it may be a little glare, but it's early. So, you know, um, but I'm going to put the camera on the board. Um, and as I'm putting the camera on the board, if you want to participate in this genealogy video, you can. You can get your paper. You can... Do it how you want to do it you can do it with the lines down you can do an actual tree you can do a bubble you can do the lines across um or you can just write it however you want to write it i had to write it like this for the sake of space in um time but i'm gonna put it on the board and then i'll just read it to you guys so give me one second to try to do this just stay right here with me for a second guys and I gotta set this up. You know, I don't wanna pause it. Okay, that's a little bit better. So I'm gonna actually, it looks like this. So I'm gonna actually start this way. And I didn't, I wasn't able to write all of it, but I wrote who was the father of who. Right, so you guys, I'm gonna just show it to you like this. Then as I'm reading, I'm going to keep it on so y'all can see. I'm going to come back to it, but I'm going to read it to you. So we're going to do the genealogy video a little different today. Okay. So let's start. I'm, and I'm going to do it verse by verse like we did the other one. And I think the next one we're going to do is either going to be at the end of this year or sometime next year. So this is Genesis chapter 5 from Adam to Noah. Now I'm going to begin reading. If you want, um, you can write it like this or you can write it your way. But I'm going to just leave it like this. Okay, so chapter 5 from Adam to Noah. Now I'm reading to you guys. This is the written account of Adam's line. When God created man, this is verse 1 and 2, he made him, and I wrote that as you guys can see, verse 1 and 2. He made him in the likeness of God. That's verse 1. Verse 2. He created them male and female and blessed them. And when they were created, he called them man. Right? And man um, 
it's Adam, it says. Okay, so now we're on verse 3. So you see that I wrote Adam had... Adam had Cain, Abel, and Seth. It doesn't say that with Cain and Abel in this particular chapter, but it does say it in chapters of, um, above. I just wanted to include them because those were his, um, them, them also, Cain and Abel. But I'm going to read three. When Adam had lived 130 years, he had a son in his own likeness, in his own image, and he named him Seth. So you see, I put Seth was made in his image and likeness, right? Um... This is verse 3 and 4. After Seth was born, Adam lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters. I put that also. Adam also had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Adam lived 930 years and then he died. So I didn't put for this one like how many years they lived. I just put their name and who they had. Okay. So that's um, Adam. So now we're on 6 through 8. And as you can see, um, like for him, I put the verses here, 6 through 8. For Adam, I put the verses 3 through 4. I tried to put the verses, but my son was playing last night. Some of it got crossed off. And then this morning when I was bringing the board up, some of it got crossed off. But hopefully y'all can still see. So now we're on 6 through 8. So you can put Adam had self, right? When Seth had lived, and then it starts with God created man also. Okay, We have a Genesis here, and I know many of you are familiar with the um, book of Genesis, but in case you're not just, that's why I wanted to do the, um, each verse. Okay, 6 through 8. And if you have your Bible, you can even open it up also. That'll make it easier for you. Okay, when Seth had lived 105 years, he became the father of Enosh. So I put Seth was the father of Enosh. Seth lived 807 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Seth lived 912 years and then he died. So then I came up over here because I was trying to do them in colors. I had a blue one, but like I said, the blue one just wasn't working. Okay, so now we're on verse 9 through 11. When Enosh had lived 90, hold on. Okay, when Enosh had lived 90 years, he became the father of Kenan. So that's why I wrote Enosh is the father of Kenan. And I got this paper here because I have something written up underneath it like a quote. And I didn't want that to distract y'all. Um, okay, 10. And after that, he became the father of Kenan, Enosh lived. Which how much? Lived 815 years and had other sons and daughters. And I put, you know, he had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enosh lived 905 years and then he died. So now we're on verse 12 through 14. And then I have here, you see, okay, when Kenan had lived 70 years, he became the father of Mahalalel. And after he became the father of Mahalalel, Kenan lived 840 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Kenan lived 910 years and then he died. Okay, so now we're getting into verse 15 through 17. We're talking about Mahalel. Okay, when Mahalel had lived 65 years, he became the father of Jared. And after he became the father of Jared, you see it here, right, guys? Mahalel lived 830 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Mahalel lived 895 years and then he died. So then 18 through 20 goes into Jared. Um, when Jared had lived 100 and it goes to um, verse 32 so that's kind of why I wanted to keep them up in verses because it makes it easier okay so when Jared had lived 162 years he became the father of Enoch and after he became the father of Enoch Jared lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters altogether Jared lived 800 years hold on no. altogether jared lived 962 years and then he died so we see this the 18 through 20 and then verses 21 through 24 i just kind of keep it like this okay when enoch had lived 65 years he became the father of methuselah enoch walked with god 300 years and had other sons and daughters altogether enoch lived 365 years Enoch walked with God, then he was no more because God took him away. 
So, you know, he enjoyed a much closer fellowship and relationship with God. He walked with God. So, you know, um, every time I read... You okay, Jay? Okay, sometimes he'd be moving when he's... Okay, so every time I read um, Genesis 5 from Adam to Noah, I always see like how uh, it was Enoch and Noah that had that... that um, it was a difference about them not saying the other ones weren't different because they were you know um but it just goes to show you like what family and your family line and family tree and descendants and things as we continue to read i'm just sharing this nugget that you can never underestimate no matter like where you come from in your family or what you go through because when god have his hand on you he have his hand on you and i want that to be encouragement for everyone you know like you see how God used Noah mightily and Enoch walked with God and you know it's like it, it's like the other people could have walked with God too it's not saying they didn't but maybe not that love or closeness because we just hear that how old they was how old they were who they became the father of they had other sons and daughters all together they lived this and there and it's like you know you know, like we have some videos talking about legacy and lineage and what do you want to be remembered for? What's going to be your impact in this earth? Are you fulfilling out your destiny, your God-given destiny and purpose? Because, you know, we have our own wills and our own purposes and plans and destinies. But when we talking, we moving into the God realm and we fulfilling our God-given purpose and destiny in his will above our own, you know. So I think that's beautiful with Enoch. So let's do 25 through 32 and we'll close. So, 25 through 27, I have over here. It's, okay. It's, uh, here. Methuselah is the father of Lamech. He had other sons and daughters. So, uh, 25. When Methuselah had lived 187 years, he became the father of Lamech. And after he became the father of Lamech, or Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had other sons and daughters. 27 huh yeah all together Methuselah lived 969 years and then he died so now so oh you know what I meant to put I meant to put this as 28 through 31 but I end up putting 29 because I was writing this kind of late yesterday so I can make sure I had it for today okay so just put 28 through 31 on y'all paper if you're doing it so when Lamech had lived 182 years, he had a son, right? He named his he named him Noah, and I wrote what Noah meant. Noah means it means he named him Noah and said he will comfort us in the labor and painful toil of our hands caused by the ground the Lord had has cursed. And like we talked about in some other videos, there's power in names. There's power in our words. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. There's power in the name. There's power in the word. You know, with common sense and your discernment, you're not just going to name your child any old thing, any old thing, you know, any old evil thing. You want to name them something that's positive, that's a blessing, just like a, a real person in God and that recognize the power of words not just going to be constantly complaining and speaking curses and unbelief and doubt and negativity over their family or their children or even their themselves or their life they're going to speak life they're going to speak life over their life you know and you guys see that with our the prayer line and our prayers and videos on here I try to come on and give you guys encouragement I give you guys the word of the Lord sometimes it's better for some people but it's what they need it be tight but it be right and but most of all it's it, it giving you the word of God because there's power in his word because doing confessions and decrees and prayers and speaking life over your life you know who want to be up underneath people complaining all the time and don't have nothing kind to say I mean it mean be honest you know be honest but don't nobody want to be around no negative Nancy. I don't. I can't be around negative people. And people that know me in real life know I can't. That's why a lot of times I like to be by myself. Unless we really close and you know we can hang and stuff. We good friends or family. But other than that, I like to be by myself because I don't like being around no negative, you know, people. I like positive you know, and it's not saying every day everything positive because we go through things in life. It's not saying deny reality. But if your whole reality every day 
is you just negative you're bitter you always gossiping you have nothing like going for you have no goals you're not going in the right direction you don't want better it's just always negative and evil i don't need that in my spirit because we already going through our own personal things i don't need nothing negative you know and i'm not saying anyone is specifically like this but this is just my mentality you know mm -mm. i didn't even like that when i was a teenager i, I just didn't mm -mm. I just did it so okay so let's finish this out this video is kind of like but wherever I went we needed to go I guess okay so um, so we know what the name Noah means and you guys see I wrote that um, when the had lived 182 years he had a son he named him Noah and said he will comfort us in the labor and painful toil of our hands caused by the ground the Lord has cursed and we see even um, he was a blessing because lament because look what he named what was coming after him you know he prophesied it over him okay 30 after noah a decree after noah was born lamech lived 595 years and had other sons and daughters altogether lamech lived 777 years and then he died and then um noah we end at 32 after noah was 500 years old he became the father of shem ham and Japheth. and like i said we have a genesis series so we see you know like talking about the flood and noah and how god moved mightily in his life and things but i pray that you guys were blessed by this morning's bible study encouragement um in genealogy video and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for tuning in you guys have a great day and god bless